This is a special lecture on the NIST Special Publication 800-30, Risk Management Risk Assessment Standard as part of Class 3. This isn't strictly speaking what's covered in a textbook, but it's extra material about this particular standard that's useful to the class. NIST 830. It's all about risk assessment and risk management. There's a mandate to conduct these assessments per FISMA, which is the Federal Information Security Management Act of 2002, requiring civilian federal government agencies to tighten up their ship in terms of information security by starting out with a risk assessment. NIST was charged with actually coming up with the standards for performing these assessments. The Act itself specifies that NIST must develop standards to categorize information based on the level of risk and standards to secure information appropriate to its level. So NIST develops standards for categorization and securing of information based on risk. It's required for a civilian federal government agency per FISMA. Different standards and practices apply to classified, meaning national security information. This is a whole different world here when you're dealing with the DOD and the various three-letter agencies. It's not required for civilian non-governmental systems, but it still provides useful guidance. Doing a risk assessment consistent with this standard is you know, still a useful thing to do, even if you're not subject to the regulation itself. It's a pretty well-developed standard, and it's applicable to a lot of commercial entities as well as the civilian governmental agencies. Now, it consists of several risk management components. How to frame risk, what's the context within which you view risk in an organization, that's a very important part of it. How to assess risk, what risks do you have and how bad are they? How do you respond to risk? Given that you've assessed your risk, you know what they are, you know how bad they are, how do you deal with it? And then how do you monitor risk? On an ongoing basis, you need to know what your risk levels are, how it changes, how your responses to risk are working or not, and so forth. Provides risk assessment guidance. How do you prepare for risk assessments? How do you conduct risk assessments? How do you communicate the results of an assessment to parties who weren't part of the assessment itself? And then how do you maintain the assessment over time? It's not a snapshot. It's not a static document that you just create once, put on a shelf, and forget about. A risk assessment is something that's meant to be maintained ongoing. And here is a picture showing the overall risk management framework here and where risk assessment fits within that framework. The frame establishes the context for risk organization, the environment for risk decisions within the particular organization itself. The assessment looks at and defines and documents the threats, vulnerability, and potential harm resulting from risk. The respond or response is what is the best course of action for dealing with this risk that you've assessed? And the monitoring is, is your response working? Is the risk environment changing? Is the risk program being implemented as planned and is it having the anticipated successful results or not? So this is a simple picture that shows risk assessment within the overall risk management process. Risk models. They define risk factors to be assessed. They define the relationships between these factors. They use the factors to assess the overall level of risk. They can communicate level of risk. A good model includes communication components, you know, or a language and a paradigm for communicating to folks within management what the risk level is. It helps guide response to risk. It includes the details for scoring and evaluating the various factors that define a risk. And it must incorporate the organizational risk culture. How much risk is an organization willing to tolerate? What types of risk does it tolerate? What types of risk does it not tolerate? Not all of these come straight from NISC, but they are, in general, good statements about risk models, and NISC helps you define a risk model. Now, here's a generic risk model as defined within NISC 830. You notice it looks quite a bit of like our triangles and rectangles diagram here. You've got the threat source in the upper left, initiates, having some likelihood of actually initiating a threat event. The threat event consists of a sequence of actions, activities, or scenarios. So you've got an agent that's doing things that are attempting to exploit vulnerabilities, and the exploitation has some likelihood of success or not. And then the vulnerability list is 
exists within a sever with a severity and within a context of predisposing conditions with pervasiveness. And then you have security controls that can help mitigate vulnerabilities. So you have threat source, threat event, vulnerabilities causing an adverse impact with risk as a combination of impact and likelihood, where impact involves some sort of damage or harm done to an information asset or an IT asset. A threat, here we've got some definitions. Threat, any circumstance or event with the potential to adversely impact via unauthorized access, destruction, disclosure, or modification of information and or denial of service. So it's adversely impact. This is different from ISO 31000 words. It's any unforeseen event. This is something that adversely impacts via these certain types of mechanisms. A threat source is the intent and method targeted at the exploitation of a vulnerability or a situation and method that may accidentally exploit a vulnerability. And a threat event is a damaging event caused by a threat source. So it's either an intent or a situation is the source and should the source cause damage, that is a threat event. A threat scenario is a model of a threat involving threat sources and threat events. You're diagramming in advance of an event actually occurring, how an event could occur for pur purposes of risk analysis and securing against that threat. How the events caused by a threat source can contribute to or cause harm. What is the sequence of activities that causes harm? Threat shifting. Now, in many cases, the threat agents are intelligent entities that can figure out what you as the potential target of a threat are up to and how you're trying to protect against what they're trying to do. So you have this phenomenon called threat shifting, which is the response of adversaries to the perceived safeguards or countermeasures, meaning that the individuals, the threat agents in many cases, and try to anticipate what you're going to try to do to respond to the threat, and they try to enhance the threat or work around your countermeasures to ensure that their threat is successful. A vulnerability is a weakness that could be exploited by a threat source. A predisposing condition is a condition which affects the likelihood that threat events will result in adverse impacts. And the likelihood of occurrences is a weighted risk factor based on an analysis of the probability that a given threat is capable of exploiting a vulnerability or set of vulnerabilities. So it's how capable is a threat of exploiting a vulnerability. Adverse impact, magnitude of harm that can be expected to result. Risk, here we are, a function of the likelihood of a threat events occurring and the potential adverse impact should the event occur. Likelihood, potential adverse impact combined together equals risk. Now, risk analysis can involve a qualitative approach, you know, low, medium, or high, bad, terrible, worse, etc., where you rate risks without actually quantifying the anticipated damage caused by them. You know that certain risks are very damaging to an organization, other risks less so, and you can qualitatively order them without necessarily knowing how much is seriously damaging, for example, in dollars and cents. You have a semi-quantitative approach, which combines qualitative and quantitative. And then you've got the pure quantitative approach, where you do, in fact, assign probabilities and dollar values for the anticipated damage resulting from a risk. Now, there are several analysis approaches that the NIST standard advocates. You can use a threat-oriented standard, where you start with a description of the threat environment, an asset or impact-oriented, where you look at the resources that you're attempting to protect against the threat and their value to the organization, or a vulnerability oriented where you survey the possible ways that any arbitrary threat could take advantage of your environment and uh, re review those and see what's out there. Keep in mind that there's a many-to-many -many relationship between threat sources, threat events, vulnerabilities, and impact. This analysis can get very complex. You know, a threat can use multiple vulnerabilities to impact multiple assets. An asset can be impacted by multiple different types of threats. Completely different threats can take advantage of the same vulnerability and so forth. Risk management hierarchy includes 
a Tier 1 or Organizational Risk Assessment, a Tier 2 or Mission Business Process Level Threat Assessment, and a Tier 3, which is the Information System Level Threat or Risk Assessment. A risk assessment may be conducted at any of these levels. You can do the risk assessment at a specific system level. You can look at it at a particular business process, look at the security risk to a process, or you can look at it globally or information-wide, and this 830 supports any one of these. And here we've got a diagram showing this. You know, at the bottom is the information systems, the top is the organization. You, you want to be able to relate risks at one level to risks at another level. You want to be able to make decisions, say, at Tier 1 that impact Tier 2 and Tier 3 in a predictable manner based on the risk assessment. So you can perform a risk analysis at any one of these levels, but ultimately the levels have to tie together. Here is an overview of the NISC risk assessment process. Step 1 is preparing for the assessment. You look at your organizational risk frame, the overall environment in which the organization operates, creates value, performs its information processing tasks, and uh, assesses what the organization's risk tolerance is and risk culture. You then conduct your assessment. You identify threat sources and events, and this starts with threat sources and events. You identify the vulnerability and predisposing conditions. You determine the likelihood of a threat event occurring. You look at if the event occurs, what is the likely magnitude of impact, and this combination of likelihood and impact gives you the risk. You then communicate these results to various stakeholders as well as the organization at large. And then once this has been communicated and you have some management consensus about what needs to be done in terms of the response, you then maintain the assessment. You know, you look at changes in the risk environment. You look at how effectively your responses are. You see if the assumptions made in the risk analysis and risk assessment have held up over time. And then you update the assessment itself based on changing circumstances. It's not a static document. Now to prepare for the assessment, you identify the purpose of the risk assessment. You identify the scope, what it encompasses. You identify the assumptions and constraints under which the risk assessment is conducted. You know, what things do you have to assume are the case and what are the things that the risk assessment can't cover. You identify the sources of threat, vulnerability, and impact information to be used. You figure out where you're going to get your information about potential threats, vulnerability, and so forth. Is it an internal survey? Is it an industry-wide survey, etc.? Then you define the risk model, the assessment approach, and the analysis approach to be used in the risk assessment. You've got a baseline of this in the NIST standard itself, but NIST is flexible enough that you can modify this or use different models should you wish. In conducting the assessment, the next step, you identify your threat sources, you identify potential threat events related to those sources, you identify vulnerabilities that can be exploited through a threat event that a threat source would uh, use, you determine the likelihood of the threat based on knowledge of the nature of the threat, the events, and the vulnerabilities, and then you determine what the impacts would be if the threat were realized. Given that, you can now define the information security risks involved in all of this. This is described in more detail in the NIST SP 830, so, but conducting the assessment is a big part of this document, and it's something we're going to be doing in this class as part of our ongoing assignment. Communicate and share assessment information. You've conducted the assessment, and this specifically addresses how you communicate and share this information. Key activities include determining the best communication methods, communicating the results to stakeholders, and then sharing the results and supporting evidence in accordance with organizational policies to individuals other than specific stakeholders. So it's first figure out how you're going to communicate, deal with the stakeholders first, and then deal with the other entities that have an interest in this. You then have to maintain the risk assessment. Specific tasks here are monitoring risk factors and understanding the reasons for any change, changes in threats, changes in vulnerability, changes in the possible impact. You may realize that certain information is actually worth more. There may be a change in your business operations that changes the valuation of information or a change in your technical environment that changes the exposure or the vulnerabilities to which this information is subject. 
There may be a change in the threat environment. Uh, there may be some technology that the threat agents are now using that wasn't available at first that affects how you need to perform your assessment and so forth. And then you need to update your risk assessment based on the monitoring results. Are the risk responses effective? You should have a program in place to measure the effectiveness of your risk responses. How do they affect the particular elements, either reducing the likelihood of a threat event happening or reducing its impact? Is it actually doing that? Is the risk environment changing? Are your threat, envir threat agents changing? Are the threat sources changing? Uh, are there different threat events? Are the likelihood of threat events changing? Do you have different vulnerabilities? It has the value of your information assets changed? And then is the organization in compliance? A threat analysis and a risk assessment is done oftentimes in order to ensure compliance with various regulatory requirements, particularly in the arena of NIST. If you're a civilian federal government agency, we've mentioned FISMA, and that's something that this document is specifically written for in terms of ensuring compliance. NIST fits within a framework of other NIST publications on risk management. We've dealt with some of these in prior lectures and these have been mentioned in the textbook, but these are the ones specifically mentioned in the NIST document itself. Special Pub 839, Managing Information Security Risk Organization Mission and the Information System View. 837, Applying the Risk Management Framework to Federal Information Systems, a Security Lifecycle Approach. And in 853, we've seen that before, Recommended Security Controls for Federal Information Systems and Organizations. 853A is a guide for assessing the security controls. So you've got Recommended Control and a guide for assessing the controls themselves. And assessing control effectiveness is a slightly different task than assessing risk. And that is it.